Hello and welcome back to another episode of <laughs> Every Time. Every Time. <laughs> United We Stand, Divided We Podcast. I'm Robert from the U.S. and our co-host Lionel from Canada. And giggles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, United We Stand, Divided We Podcast. It, it, it's, you know what... <laughs> We're coming out of winter. We're going into spring. We didn't have much of a winter here. You probably didn't have much of one there, but the weather's all weird weeks up and down. Lots of rain in the next couple of days. And uh, I, I, you know, I did a lot of traveling uh, to check out the eclipse and uh, um, had to shoot everything with my Pixel 8 Pro. So it's not like they're going to look like pro pictures or anything, but they turn out okay, considering there was cloud cover and it barely peeked through there were still clouds covering it, but it was enough to actually see. So I had a good time. I went down to Niagara Falls, actually. I was trying to go to Fort Erie and cross from Buffalo. But they nice. had decided to close almost every street in the city uh, because they didn't want anybody looking at anything. Uh, I'm exaggerating. <laughs> uh, I'm never going to Fort Erie again. I'll say that publicly. Um, unless I have to travel through it to go to Buffalo or something. But I'll probably just go through Niagara Falls. Instead, <laughs> yeah. take the more scenic route. Anyways, um, so let's let get into get into the well, thing. Well, ironically, uh, my area actually had like I guess eighty percent, but it was literally yeah. dark clouds all day because it was raining. So I mean, I don't no, know. Yeah, that anything. sucks. Yeah. That sucks. Um, okay, so sorry, I gotta put on the old man face again and have a look here. Um, oh, well, some, did you hear about those people that decided to pay $1,500 to take a Delta flight from, was it Houston or Dallas to Detroit or something to see I, the eclipse? But like, they didn't even hardly see any of the eclipse because of course it's a, it's a <laughs> you know, the plane can't turn sideways. <laughs> so they're like paid 1500 bucks and they, they just barely they, saw they like were a, intending to watch it from the air. Yes. Well, that's just foolhardy. Unless, unless you're the pilot and you right. have permission yeah. to turn the plane a certain way, you're not going to see it. That makes right. absolutely no sense. They said, oh, we got to see the dark cloud moving on the ground. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I see that all the time when the clouds go over. <laughs> yeah. It's, I, there's I'm not going to spend $1,500 to take shadow. a plane ride for something I can't see. It's oh. ridiculous. I, uh, I just had a bug fly past me. What? One warm day and a bug got into my house. I, I, okay. <clears throat> Anywho, apparently Google searches for eye damage jump in Ontario clinic <laughs> in Ontario clinic seeing patients after eclipse. Now, <laughs> without even going into that article specifically, there's probably dozens of those all over North America. Uh, people, you know, I've actually talked to a few people who were actually concerned. Oh, I looked at it. Am I going to go blind? I said, you don't understand. <laughs> you probably glanced at the sun a thousand times in your life. It happens. The, the, the problem is that if you think it doesn't hurt because you're only seeing a sliver of light is when it's doing damage. Normally you're looking at it. It's bright. It hurts your eyes. So you stop looking at it and the damage doesn't get done. Right. Right. Um, so if you really only glanced at it for a second and a half, you're probably just fine. Um, it was so much cloud cover for ours, even when it did clear a little bit, it was never fully cleared. So yeah. it was partially filtered out by all that tons of water it was going through in the first place. So I didn't even have the filter on my phone. No filter, picture was fine. But uh, that said... Um, the Google searches for high damage gets gets me a little yeah. bit. Um, I saw that. that everybody... Everyone obviously listened to our podcast last week. I mean, if they would have no. listened to our podcast, <laughs> they would have known. Well, you know what? <laughs> they could have listened to a lot of podcasts and a lot of uh, watched a I'm lot sure. of TV shows and and stuff. But um, apparently, the not quite official count, but official estimate uh, out of Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada, um, was nowhere near a million. They said it was like 260 or 70,000. I can't remember the exact number, but it was well over 200,000 in one day that came just for the event. It's a lot of people for a city that is only a city of 50 some odd thousand. 
or 70,000, something like that, 50 or 70,000 oh, wow. people. And they got like 200 and some thousand. Now they say that's a record, but the truth of the matter is I don't know that they actually have a really accurate way of estimating. It's not like estimating uh, how many people show up to Macy's parade. You could literally <laughs> have somebody do rudimentary head counts on every second block for 10 blocks and then average that out over the course of the entire parade route. And you would get a probably um, 85 to 95% accuracy count, right? And, you, and then you could estimate from there. But how do you estimate how many people show up at Niagara Falls? Are you going by the people that were at the falls? Or did you count people like me that were still in the city of Niagara Falls, but were way the hell away from the falls? Right. They didn't know we were there. They never knew we were there. There were other people that went there. They didn't buy hotel or buy. <laughs> they didn't rent a hotel or hire a hotel. They didn't take public transit. Uh, they went in somebody else's car. Nobody asked how many people you have in your car. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. I honestly believe that there probably wasn't more than 300,000 people at the absolute most that didn't already live there. But to put this into perspective, I know for a fact they have more than fifteen or 20,000 people on a summer day there because just at the falls alone, you have to wade through over 500 people just to get close to the water so see the, to see the falls yourself. If you walk from a certain yeah. angle, it takes forever. And you're like, I can't get near it. And you finally do. And you got to wait your turn to get close to, to, to the, to the uh, fencing or whatever. It's a stone wall yeah. actually. Um, and, and, and you could easily count 300 people just in one section alone. Well over 500. If you go the entire stretch where you can still see all of the falls. And that's just on the Canadian side. I mentioned you probably, you know, get several hundred or at least a few hundred on the American side at the same time on a good day too. Um, I imagine but, so. Yeah. Yeah. There's, but there's no, there's no way that you say that if you have that um, and then you've got a bunch of the people that go to Marine land, well, hopefully not anymore because that place needs to be shut down. It's another story. Um, various other things. There's, there, there's the tourist area. Uh, that they have and there's you know just restaurants and arcades and and uh theme museums and stuff like that uh, and people go there and they'll spend hours and hours and hours there they'll go to the falls for half an hour take pictures and then go over to the family area with the kids and and, and enjoy like two days and then of course you got the casinos how many people go into the casino and you never knew that they were even in the city it's just like las vegas you go in right. there, you don't have to give them your name to get money or to give them your money. So, right. <laughs> well, technically in the States, I guess you do have to, if you take money, you do have to give you, because you have to pay taxes on it there. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not a gambler, so I don't, I'm not yeah, well, Vegas, but there's I There's been Canadians yeah. who've been hit with a tax. Like they'll win, you know, $75,000 and, and and the U.S. government takes like thirty thousand of it, or something like that, or maybe half. I'm not sure what it is. Wow. It's a large amount, and they have to actually come back to Canada, go to court, uh, and 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 fight to get their money back because they don't like. Why am I paying you taxes? Uh, I gave money; they gave it back to me. What am I owing you the taxes for? I don't have any infrastructure. I don't live here, <laughs> and they, ninety-nine percent of the time they win. But that's another that's another story altogether. Basically, in Canada, we don't pay taxes on any form of lottery, which includes gambling. So, if you win a million dollars, you get to keep the whole million. Period. Oh, yeah. You pay taxes on interest. In, <laughs> what's that? Now you said, yeah, not here. Yeah, no, not there. But here, yes. But you know what? <laughs> how how many people win a million dollars? So we don't have an advantage, really. Anyway, yeah, there was somebody who just claimed the single winning ticket. For the one point two billion dollar Powerball ticket in Oregon, um, did you? I'm sorry. Did you say one point two billion? Billion with a B. I, yes. I, I remember. I remember when I was young, and I thought, how would, can they possibly have a lottery where a guy wins three hundred million dollars? <laughs> and, and that was a record at the time. Yeah. anywhere i think it was a world record at the time for a lottery don't get me wrong nobody in the u.s will ever win 300 million dollars and keep 300 million dollars you don't no. get it you either pay taxes gone 
yeah, you get it over time and, and a bunch of it's gone or 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 you get the maximum amount gone and can take the rest right now and then not have to pay tax on what you have left so if you you know i mean you you get to what uh 160 million which who the hell would who the hell wouldn't oh, want to take that anyways <laughs> you know i'd be give it to me <laughs> but yeah. then again i don't know why people say that either uh because if 300 million dollars and they're going to pay you for the next 25 years monthly. That's a lot of money you'd be getting every month. What would you ever want for? Yeah. You know, it's like six months down the road, you'd be like, holy shit, I got how much in the bank? I mean, <laughs> right. And that's after your tax. Yeah, I think, I think people just want to get it and be done with it, you know, because they want to, they yeah. want to be able to take whatever they have and invest it because they could probably make more if they invested it correctly. For smart know? people that know what they're doing. Yes. But yeah. anyways, we'll move on from that because that's way off our topic for today. Yeah. Um, so uh, where, okay. We, was there something else we wanted to mention? No, it wasn't anything about that. So just moving on to another smaller topic, although it could be a big deal for some people is the uh, AI editing tools that you get in Google Photos if you're a pixel owner, um, or I believe if uh, if you pay for uh, uh, Google One, at least a, I don't know, I can't remember what tier. Well, the, gets- the two terabyte plan gets you um, unlimited. Below the two terabyte, remember, it's you get 10 <laughs> saves. Or edits. Well, no, that's what they're announcing now. That 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 didn't exist before. You didn't get anything right. up until up until they do this. This is what we're saying. Right. So yeah. at this point, right now, if you don't have a pixel, you get either nothing or you have to go with Google One, and then you can get some of the photo, but not all of them. Not no. all of the photo editing features are available. Like Magic Editor doesn't exist anywhere other than a pixel. Although yeah. another version of it, uh, arguably even better. Uh, does exist uh, on the Samsung Galaxy S24, and I believe they brought it to the S23, did they not? Yeah. Yeah, and the one you want. There's some, it, again, it's um, not quite as, you know, powerful or whatever you want to call it as the S24, but they did um, with the new 6.1 One UI update, right. it became available. Yeah, so, that, so basically pixels and uh <laughs> latest pixels pixel 7 series pixel 8 series s23 and s24 series phones <clears throat> at least the ultra versions and the pre you know pro versions um and they have that kind of stuff so everyone yeah. else though as of may uh i believe you have the number written down the date or memorized yeah, maybe it was may 15th or 17th one of those dates somewhere in may roughly around the middle of may 15th actually you're right uh may 15th uh, all of these features will be available to basically any Android user who has Google Photos uh, or iOS. Actually, I believe it's it specifically mentions as well. So iOS users will be able to do that as well. But again, you will have to have Google One in the premium tier, two terabytes, in order to get an unlimited amount of uh, Magic Editor saves. Now that doesn't mean everything yeah. else isn't included. Uh, if you have it, because there are a lot of other editing features that will just blow your mind away once you actually see them. Um, some of them are, you know, not all that great, but they're, they're really fun to play with when you first get them. And some people like these things more than others. Magic Eraser right. was fantastic out of the gate, but it always left a little to be desired. You're like, well, that looks really cool, but but Magic Editor has an erase feature. And it does a much better job because it, it fully uses AI. It doesn't just interpolate mm-hmm. the pixels behind the scenes. It uses yeah, AI and will often fill. Uh, you've tried it on yours by now, I'm hoping. Uh, yes, I have. It is different, but I don't really use it a whole lot. So I, it's, you know, it was just like, let me say, move this tree, you know, or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like, right. it's 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 more of a fun feature than anything else but it's also kind of cool because if you do get pictures let's say of your kids or grandkids or nephews or nieces or whatever and you're on the beach and there's just way too many people bouncing in the background that is a distraction because those bigger people 30 feet further back look like the same size as your tiny little kids so you can erase those people in the background 
and it's beach. So the sand isn't going to look weird when, when, when it fixes it, it might even fill it in. If it's like in a park, it, it, it'll actually put a tree or a bush or a fence in its well, place. Where, where I found the most use for that magic eraser function, regardless of which method it was, is if yeah. I'm on vacation, I take a bunch of pictures because you know, right. nine times out of 10, there's other people on vacation taking pictures you know, yes. and they're going to be in your shot. So it's nice to be able to have the ability. And I've used it quite a bit on some vacation pictures. So uh, yeah, see, that's exactly these next it. vacations yeah. coming up. It'll be interesting to see how much better it does work. Cause I'm sure I'll end up using it. Are you, but one thing that's uh, really cool about the Samsung, and I don't know how the Google pixel works is you're able to use the, um, I forget what they call it, but you basically like circle an object and you can long press it and it allows you to move the object around in the picture, right? Well, you can actually copy that, open a new picture and then paste that into the other picture. So I know, no, no Google doesn't do that. Yeah. Google, Google, cool. Google doesn't do that. Samsung one up to Google on that one. It's Google's, yeah. it's Google's software. And I mean, they basically took it and enhanced it um, with Google's permission. But Google, for some reason, has not uh, added that. Although I would be willing to bet, you know, my my back molars that the Pixel Nine uh, will actually add that type of thing into yeah, it. Yeah, I would imagine. Especially yeah, I mean, since they're now basically opening it up, Samsung and Google are both basically saying all this exclusive stuff is going to be available for all these other phones. Um, so next year's phones will obviously have other exclusivities. And some of the things that Google just basically said, go ahead, Samsung, one up us. You got the newest phone. Uh, we're going to go do the same thing come October. So I, well, I can see it being function. useful. Well, yeah, I can, I can see it being useful because like when we were in um, the Bahamas last year, you know, and you take a picture of this nice sunset. I didn't have anybody take a picture of us in, you know, with the sunset behind us. I could have cropped me and my wife out and put us in the sunset. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the best, I, the best I've been able to do, of course, is to resize and move them around. I had two people in a picture and I was dissatisfied with the level of detail that showed up for the people. Whereas the actual landscape itself looked pretty cool and it wasn't a wonderful shot without the people though but right. i thought what if they were a little bit further away and the the beach and the water go on an angle kind of you know like this into the background and then then there's the end of the beach where the trees meet and the cliff starts and it comes in in like this before it opens up to a peninsula in the background at the edge of the water going that way i thought what if these people were further back right at that peninsula and the eye went right there anyways so I, I did exactly that. I did the long press thing in Magic Editor and, and I shrunk them down and put them further back. And because I'm making them smaller, you can't see any of the anomalies and you cannot tell where I moved yeah. them from because it's sand. And so yeah. when it, when it interpolates that, it's, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's very easy. So it, it was, it's, it's a cool shot. Yeah. Um, but anywho... So that that that's just that little bit of news. Wanted to bring that up because uh, even though that's not until May, that is, um, it's going to be a big deal for some people. Um, and it's nice to know that you have the choice of being able to use the type of uh, photo editor uh, that you want to use, the, um, uh, the photo storage and video storage uh, that you want to use and be able to yeah. get all this without having to go with a specific brand. So for people yeah. who are loyal to a different brand or not loyal or uh, to any brand and just want to take whatever works right now, that's what you want. You want, uh, I was going to say an LG, but good luck with that one, right? Uh, <laughs> why don't I just say well, I'm glad to see them, you know, give it out to more people. There's no so options anymore. What am yeah. I saying? Did, wait yeah. a minute. Is there a Motorola? There is still Motorola. There's yep. still and Motorola. there's actually a Sony too. Or you can get a they, TCL They still do the Xperia phone. line. Did you know you can get a TCL phone? No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, TCL sells about f at least a few models. And they're actually not bad. They're not bad. They're all budget phones, obviously, and they're not bad. But then again, TCL sells marvelous TVs at a budget price. So right. I, I would expect that they could do the same thing with a phone. 
I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> I wouldn't buy it with your money. <laughs> I want my pixel. And if I wasn't going to have a pixel, I'd have a S20, whatever, you know. Uh, and if I was, you know, really, really drunk, I might get an iPhone one day if I'm dying and that's the only thing available. I don't have a problem with iPhone users. We jest a lot about that. We do. Um, but I own an I iPad. All the time. I tell people all the time, look, the the uh, the Apple hardware is fantastic hardware. It is. I it just is. don't like their restrictive ecosystem, period. I don't either. <laughs> but I'm going to be honest with you. Both Google and Samsung are starting to get a little more restrictive lately. Nothing like Apple, at least not yet, but kind of. But here's the thing. The whole thing with the EU and various other things and some stuff going on in the U.S. as well. Are, are forcing Apple to be a little bit more open and it is making it better. And let's segue that right into the whole thing about air tags versus we wish we had something in Android as good as air tags. It's coming. Uh, you want to bring that one up? Yeah. So they have the new find my device network that they're putting out and uh, they, they talked about it for what a year, year and a half or something, you know, talked about almost a year, almost a year ago to the date, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but what's nice to see is um, I almost said Chipotle. <laughs> That's food. <laughs> I did. I've done that several times today while reading it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, they, they're coming out with um, specifically find my device capable to tags. That's kind of no, like there's, an air there's tag another brand. Too. I can't remember what it is. Oh, I thought that was the only brand. I said no, no. There, there, there is a second one. I just can't remember what it is, and I did not for some reason. I didn't save that information. Um, oh, it's Pebble. Pebble B. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, I got the article pulled up right here. It's uh, the Chipolo and Pebble B. I've never heard of Pebble B. Have you? Uh, I have not. <laughs> uh, no, um, but here's the interesting thing is apparently, and I, again, I can't seem to find that article. Um, you might be able to look that up a little quicker than me because you have both phone and a computer available to you in front of you right now. But, uh, tile is apparently not going to make a, an Android find my device network capable tile which yeah. is really mind boggling considering they are the only major player outside of Samsung for Android. And really the only one that you could use at this very day, unless you own a Samsung. Yeah. Yeah. That's so surprising. It, it, I, I didn't know that. I that's very surprising. Be the first ones to jump on board and say, yeah, let's go do that. In fact, I thought they would find a way to, uh, 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 include whatever they must have a totally different type of network that they use but it doesn't make any sense because it's not really it's a network on the phones but the way theirs works is strictly bluetooth so if you can't talk to another device you ain't gonna find it you might know where it might have been and if right. you get close there's got to be at least a couple other devices that are, have bluetooth on in order to find it samsung's is way more robust than that of course uh, and obviously AirTags, you know, works perfectly fine because right. any amount of Bluetooth anywhere and it's going to say, hey, my AirTag is over here. Go two feet to the right and you'll find it somewhere in this area. But uh, it's it's an, <laughs> another, another thing. But I'm looking forward to that because I've always wanted to have uh, the tags on some of my things. Like uh, when I get expensive camera equipment again one day, I definitely want to have AirTag equivalents yeah. uh, on on all of the bags and attached to each and every camera uh, or lens bag that I have. <laughs> um, I would like to have one um, on my keys, even you know. <laughs> again, well, and not? I can I, I imagine. Oh, well, and... you know what? Honestly, I will put one on my car. I'm not yeah. kidding. I'll put one on my car, although. It, it won't work as well if it's on the move, like on the freeway or if at all, but, um, cause you really do need GPS if you have something moving that fast, but sorry, I cut you off. You were going to say, no, that's okay. I was just saying that I imagine that, you know, Samsung has had their smart thing, you know, find, um, for a long time I've had, and, and being that all my devices are now Samsung, 
<clears throat> it works really, really well. And I have a smart tag and I actually used it because I just want to see how well it would ping on our vacation last year. And I was able to track the bag almost step by step. It, it worked actually very, very well. Yeah, yeah. And I imagine I, their tag too is probably going to be capable of like a software update or something to put it into that Android ecosystem. That might be possible. I think I think one thing Samsung does want to do is get into that because Samsung is included in that whole consortium of getting that together. Uh, they're part of it and they wanted to do it too. Uh, and, and let's face it, if they do that, there's a lot of people that are just going to buy, I'm going to buy the Samsung one because I trust it. And quite frankly, if I had a choice right now of this Pebble something or other, or a Samsung one that worked with the network, I'd choose the Samsung one because, you know, <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, just for me, it would. But uh, in, all, in all honesty, I, I've thought about buying tiles so many times. And I've always stopped short because everything I've ever read about them basically tells me that uh, you, you can use it to find stuff, but it's kind of not the easiest thing in the world to do. I mean, it's like turning off your phone and trying to ping where you last knew it was half the time. Uh, I can't speak from experience, but I do know that when you're just looking for your phone, whether you have an iPhone or an Android phone, your Find My Device natively works off the network brilliantly. I've had uh, a friend who had lost his phone and he managed to get a hold of me via, uh, I think he had a secondary phone, but he had to use the internet calling to call me. And right. he phones me and Apparently, hey, he had dropped his phone. He was walking home a little bit, you know, a few sheets to the wind and slipped and fell. And unbeknownst to him, he didn't tell me this at the time. He had actually only got up when the ambulance and paramedics picked him up off the, you know, made sure he was okay and got, made sure he got home. But in all of that, he didn't realize that his phone had fallen somewhere and it was icy. So when we finally went back, we pinged the area, but we couldn't ping it anymore. It died before I could get there with my car. So it was, it was like, uh, here's where it, it doesn't is. have like a last known, like this is the last place it was pinged. Like basically, it yes. Like so we basically had to go and, and just and kind of look. Uh, and and he told me this is where I this is where I fell. I don't really remember that. I only remember them picking me up. And I said, well, then it probably slid up this guy's driveway. He said, what do you mean slid up? He says, you don't understand how ice works in Canada. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you have backward ice? <laughs> yeah. We're so used to the ice, we go uphill on it. <laughs> oh, I see. No, but seriously, if you drop your phone and, and, and on it, and it hits a driveway, it can go up and then hit a dry spot and not come back down. Right? So I said, we should be looking under these people's cars and their driveways. And there was one house that was a few feet from where he said he was picked up. So I looked under and sure enough, the damn phone was there. But the, here's the funny thing about it. It started pinging right about the time I was bending down to get it because it wasn't actually off. I don't know what the hell caused it to like, maybe it turned itself off and back on again. I have no idea, but it started pinging right about the time I bent down and I thought, oh, you gotta be kidding me. So we would have found it one way or the other anyways, but had, had we waited any longer, the guy would have drove over it because it was under the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> so he, got, he got lucky. And just for the record, I, that, that phone used to be mine. It was, it was, I sold him the phone about three months earlier. It was my old Nexus 6P, or not 6P, 6, the big giant. Yeah. <laughs> I did a little Googling, and unfortunately I'm wrong. The software oh. in the smart tag or the smart tag two is not capable of being on the Google Find right, okay. device network, but it does say that they are expanding their ecosystem. So yes. I'm, I was with, with as much integration as Google and Samsung have with all their devices, yeah. you know, they're going to come they're out with a it. find my device capable, you know, tag or something. Right. Rumor also has it that Google is going to be, Rumor, grain of salt. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Rumor has it Google will also be uh, coming out with their own tag system, uh, their actual physical tags. It wouldn't surprise um, me. It'll be out for a year and then they'll kill it. 
<laughs> no, it won't be for three months. Three months. Wow, you're going through. Okay. <laughs> three months. <laughs> yeah. No, but, but seriously, whether they do or not is actually not even really that important because, I mean, of all the things you need to have to, to be actual Google products, to be honest with you, the tag is the least of it because it's not like it's going to work better if yeah. it's made by Google because the actual idea behind the entire network is that anyone that actually adopts the um, – uh the technology for that network it works so yeah. as soon as samsung does theirs it will this pebble b whatever you called it pebble b uh, yeah that will, i've never yeah that, that, that one will just work right out of the gate everything's fine with that but i imagine some of these things are going to be insanely overly priced at first um they should be acting like everybody wants it so let's jack the price up well like that pebble was like 20 kind of like you're heading out on the road vacation and the gas station at the edge of town going out of out of the city um is is uh twice as expensive as the one coming back <laughs> you know if you're coming back you're like well yeah, screw it i'll make it home right if you're on your way out you're like no i need the gas now <laughs> i'm driving a thousand miles <laughs> yeah, i funny. mean generally if i go on long road trips that are like a day eight hours or something i always fill up the second i get out of town I mean, I start with a full tank, but the first town yeah. I come to outside of town, which is basically just past the subs, um, I stop and I get gas regardless of the price. It's, it's only, you know, another five or $10 or whatever it is that you use to get out of city. And, yeah. and, and I'm a hundred percent full and I can go further, less problems. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I can talk. A note on the tile. Um, my, my son law actually has a tile and I just, it just occurred to me when you said that. And um, he left his wallet in his car, thinking he had lost it, and he his tile wasn't working. He couldn't ping the tile. Now, oh. now the battery might just be dead because he's not too conscientious about keeping track of like battery levels, because you right. do have to charge them. I mean, they don't last forever, forever. Right. Uh, and he's had it for probably a year. Like I just happened to notice when I was looking at my Samsung uh, Find network. Um, that my smart tag is low battery. So I'm going to have to go run it down and swap the battery in it. But um, he's not too keen about keeping up with the battery level. So it could just uh -huh. be the battery's dead. But right. in addition to that, I know when he was first setting it up, he had issues with the Bluetooth connectivity and it just didn't ever seem to work right. I personally have had a couple tile things and I've never had them actually work very well personally. But So um, I made the right decision in not spending money on it. Is yeah, what you're I think so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you know, basically I didn't, I wouldn't have had a lot of choices anyways, but at least for the future, I will have choices. I'll be able to get that yeah. stuff done. And, you know, kind of a side note, um, this year, and I don't know why, I guess I'm like Rachel from Friends. Uh, everyone made fun of her for not having renter's insurance. I've gone years without renter's insurance and I don't know my rent. And that is just the dumbest thing in the world. Honestly, you should have renter's insurance if you own more than just your clothes. Yeah. Uh, even if you, even if that's all you own. Um, because most renter's insurance, a lot of people think, okay, oh, it's going to cover my computer. It's going to cover my PS5 or 4 or whatever I own or my TV. whoop de doo right? Not everybody has $10,000 worth of camera equipment or, or, or a set of drums in their basement or whatever it is they own. But mm -hmm. there's the limitation that they pay up to is usually pretty high for a moderate amount that you pay. And you can usually bundle that with your home and or auto insurance and get sometimes massive discounts on the whole thing. And, and for me, it's costing me less money to have renter's insurance and auto insurance than it costs me just for my auto insurance. So big tip, do that if you don't have it. <laughs> And yeah. <laughs> bundle it, so you have to do it as the same uh, insurance uh, agent. And, and and you know what? If you don't even have an insurance ag agent, don't worry about it. Go go get a um, uh, what do you call? It? What's the word I'm looking for? I have to forget that while we're recording. Um, <laughs> um you know, the, the person you go to, uh, and they they talk, they 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 see all of the all of the other places. A broker. That's an. 
Oh, broker. Okay, yeah. See, we yeah. don't. Yeah, we don't really have brokers here. So, what do you mean you don't have brokers? Thing. Brokers are bigger in the states than they are in Canada. I don't know. I mean, I mean, it's because I never use one. I just always go to insurance company or agent. You know. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know what? If you have a good insurance, <laughs> good insurance company, you're happy with it. Fantastic. But for yeah. somebody who doesn't really understand it as much, doesn't know it, or maybe you don't have enough money to get all the big premium plans for everything you need. Go to a broker. They'll find you the best possible deals, best possible insurance. I had an issue with mine, and I called the broker. Broker spent the whole day working it out for me. Called me back and said, we solved the problem. Don't worry about it. Now, how do I go through that? I don't know how to correct it, for starters. Even if I did, I still have to fight with them myself. Hours and hours and hours on the phone. They did it for me. And then I called them instead of the agent. And and said, I'm thinking about getting renter's insurance. They explained everything to me, worked it all out. And then the agent, the insurance company sends me all the paperwork and everything's hunky-dory fine. So I'm fully insured. So basically the bottom line is I threw that in just for, for the heck of it. Uh, as we were talking about other stuff, get renter's insurance, cover everything, cover your phones. It, it doesn't have to be stuff burns down in your house or is burglarized. I feel if like we just did a commercial break for insurance. Phone, I know. If you lose your phone or it's stolen or something while you're on vacation, most plans, not all, so check it out, make sure you get the right one, will will actually cover your cell phone if it gets stolen or lost while you're on vacation away from home. So Wait, you, you forgot. This segment brought to you by your T-Woo. local broker. <laughs> No, Timu. I'm just kidding. I just, I only said that because it just popped up on my, on my computer. <laughs> Shop like yeah. a billionaire. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Okay. So find my device network. Not up and running yet. Um, supposed to be. Um, not that it matters. There's not a lot you can do with it except for that one tag that I still don't even know how to get my hands on it or how much it would cost. But um it's but not if you're available. already in the Samsung ecosystem, you already have it. You don't need it. Well, technically for Samsung, yeah, but it doesn't. It's that that's not going to help you for anything that isn't a Samsung. No, that's why I said if you're in the Samsung ecosystem, if you have Samsung devices like right. my wife, me, we all have Samsung devices. I wouldn't necessarily need to oh, use. Well, yeah, Google. no, I mean you're fine. If, I mean, yeah. it's just like, but that's the same thing as Apple. I mean, but yeah, but the right. thing about it is, is, what I'm saying is, is that if you have anything else, or if you have more than one thing. Keep in mind that the, that Google's will work with all Android phones, right? Uh, well, newer ones, anyways. I well, I know all Android phones, actually. Um, so you won't have to you won't have to worry about that. So your Samsungs will work with it too. Uh, anything you buy uh, electronically, my uh, uh, Pixel Buds Pro, they're on my Find yeah. My Device thing already. So the new network, they'll just work perfectly fine. Right now, these just show us off. It technically knows where they were last, but it's not quite the same thing. I'm not sure exactly how much more robust the network is that it can figure it out. I think when it's about to die, it actually maybe takes a snapshot of the closest location that it can give you. Right now, this only knows I'm within the Wi-Fi network of my home, which could be anywhere from 50 feet outside my house to the basement. Right, but well, here's something interesting. I just happened to notice I was I was closing this page out. JBL that they have Tour Pro Two, Tour One M Two are c- compatible, and a Sony WH One Thousand XM Five headphones are also. Compatible. Yes, there you go. Nice. So that and that's really good because I mean, uh, you know what? I mean, bigger bigger headphones are different. It's hard to lose something like this, for instance, but. This, especially if you've got them outside of the case, which some people don't, you know, they'll take them out, put them in the ears, and they'll take them out. They don't put them back in the case. They just right. put them down, and they, you know, they're like, they end up under the couch cushions or something. The thing about it is, is that the new network should be able to find these. Right now, as far as I know, this will only find the case and the buds, or the buds out of the case, or the buds out of the case and the case. I don't think that it is actually is robust enough to find each earbud individually. And I'm pretty sure Apple AirPods, at least they're more expensive ones, they can actually do that with uh, their Find My stuff. 
Interesting. Um, I, I didn't know that, but you know, it's the thing is, is that, that becomes a tracker for your backpack because you know how many times you put in your earbuds in your backpack. You know? Well, for so, people who do, I might know always in my right. pocket. But that's a really good point. I mean, you could literally, especially with something like this, because all these new ones have, you know, the battery in it yeah. to charge them. Uh, especially if you're starting out, you know, new, the earbuds still have a full charge. The pack has a full charge. You've got a day or two. If you're not using them much, if you use them a lot, you might only have a few hours, but mm -hmm. still point is, is if there's charge in that pack, even if you've got the earbuds in your ear, it should be able to find the pack. I don't yeah. know if it does it now, but the next version should be able to find both the pack and the earbuds individually. So, but for now, I, I it's just nice that you can. Um, yeah. And I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure where else we were going with this. We mentioned a few things. That we wanted to get oh yeah no sorry i do know <laughs> uh it's a it's a satellite connectivity um in google messages uh apparently so far this is just conjecture <laughs> uh may possibly work for more than just emergency messages uh i mean it's obviously not going to be rcs messages you know sending people TikTok videos or anything <laughs> but you should send a text to somebody. I'm out of coverage, uh, text only in satellite coverage right now. I'll be home in seven hours if a rock slide doesn't kill me first. You know, uh, th that's the kind of thing you can do uh, when when they launch it, hopefully. Uh, I, I'm actually looking forward to that because there are a couple of spots that I go to in the summer sometimes to get nice pictures. And it's very spotty. And if it does work like this, it should mean I, sh I could actually completely cut that data off and just rely on the satellite in order to get my emergency messages out. Well, the thing is, is that I think that has a huge, I see, I didn't even know that. I think that has a huge benefit for hikers and, you know, outdoors people that, um, because people still, for whatever reason, I would never do it. People still go out by themselves, you know, and I do. how many times, you know, they get hurt and now they have no way of communicating with anybody. So that's, that's a, that's a pretty big feature. I, I like that. I, I don't, I don't, I don't get hurt when I go out, but again, you know, uh, that could be just sheer luck. I mean, a lot of it is paying attention. Uh, a lot of it is I, I, I don't go out drunk. <laughs> um, and, and, yeah, but anything can happen. I, I mean, slip on a wet I rock. Or, generally, I mean, yeah, yeah, I don't generally go beyond what is my skill level of. Like, I went into an area that was basically forced me to have to rock climb um, to continue. And to be honest with you, I could have gone further because there is a certain level of skill that I can do it. But I actually had to stop myself. And as I look back, back retroactively now to last July when I went, um. I was really, really getting way more tired climbing back up. Uh, and where I noticed it wasn't a long spot or really steep. It was only about 12 feet to climb and not on a massive angle, just some boulders to climb over. And yeah. I was so winded, I had to actually take a break. And as I couldn't believe it. I was like, what the hell? And as I look back at it now, with the health issues that I've been having recently, um, that is probably the first time that that actually popped up and it's obviously gotten worse since then, but I didn't think of it. I just thought I was out of shape and I didn't think anything of it. I just figured, okay, well, I guess I got to start, you know, walking more and doing more stuff, getting more active. And it turns out I was wrong. Yeah. Um, probably should have just went to a doctor that day, <laughs> but nonetheless, it's, it's all good. I got a specialist appointment. We won't get into all my health stuff in here right now, but uh, everything's everything's good. everything's working out. I'm feeling a lot better now. Um, so, anyways, the satellite connectivity is a a huge huge thing. Uh, iPhone, uh, well, at least the 15. I think I'm not sure which. I don't remember how many of them do it, but your newer iPhones uh, have, or at least the, the upper versions of them. Um, have the satellite connectivity uh for yeah. emergencies and i'm not i don't remember but doesn't samsung s24 do that too or am, am i just i think it does i think i remember reading something about it but i don't 
obviously have the 24 right now, so I don't I don't really know. Uh, well, I I think it's going to be interesting because what I what I would like to actually see is government's mandate that all phones have to have it because it makes no sense to not. And they don't have to make it so that you can text whenever you want for money or free right? either way. Yeah. Um, but they should mandate that it's automatically available. So if the infrastructure is completely gone or you're, you've fallen off a cliff, uh, you know, for or whatever while hiking, yeah. then you can do it. And keep in mind, if you have a phone that has fall detection, like I'm sure, I think yours does, does it not? It does. Mm -hmm. yeah, mine does. Uh, newer iPhones do. Um, you have that fall detection and you, 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 if you don't have the network, it would still text via the uh, yeah. uh, satellite. So you would still, well, another thing, it would, it would ping your location accurately because it's a freaking yes. satellite. <laughs> well, natural disaster. You know, if you have a tornado comes to you and it tears down, you know, all the cell phone infrastructure. It could um, happen. And it has happened. And, and, yeah. So that would be another, you know, nice um, fallback. Yeah. I, mean, like, I mean, a lot hey, of people I'm will safe. Hold on. It'll be inundated with people trying to text out and they won't be able to handle it. And so you don't understand. They don't all necessarily go to the same satellite at the same time. Um, first of all, for the satellite idea to work, it has to work with a GPS system to know where it is. Otherwise, what's the point of it using it as an emergency? Because you don't know where you are when you fell off a cliff and broke your leg. Well, I was in the hiking in the mountains. I don't know the name of the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, sorry, no. Right. Um, so it, there's at least three pointing at you at any time. And if you look at your phone and use any of those apps that find find you know the satellites or any app that's built into the phone that it'll show you how many satellites you're actually connected to for whatever reason, GPS or something else. Uh, things like the Torx app that show you the speed, they have to show you how many satellites you're actually connected to. Uh, I've had my phone connected over to over 54 at once. 54. <laughs> oh. Yeah. The, 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 the GPS satellite infrastructure in space is huge. I mean, it's, I'm surprised you can even get to space anymore. It's like a wall of satellites. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I mean, imagine yeah. if they all ran down at the same time, it would be hell on earth. Um, yeah. We could go, we could go on and on about that, but we won't. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Now. Uh, so the infrastructure is not something they have to build up. It's just something they have to put in the phones um, and then work out with whatever companies. In this particular case, they are mentioning T-Mobile and Starlink, which makes you wonder, well, what about Canada? We don't use either one of them, and they don't have coverage here. Well, Elon Musk does. <laughs> and so that's possible, right? They, they can make something. But there's also other satellites here as well. And of course, there's the satellites that all of the major uh, communications company in Canada have access to as well because of their programming and their communication needs, as well as ground needs. And this is the other thing. You may need the satellite and have to use it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to have a line all the way to where you're texting to, because when it comes back down, it's going to end up in a lot of microwaves and back in the cellular system. Somewhere Do you remember else. back when Sprint was still a company and they had those push to talk walkie talkie phones that like a lot of businesses Nextel. use them to communicate within the business? Wait, wait is that Nextel um, or is Nextel the Canadian one? I don't remember which which is which. Uh, Same thing. It might I have been the Canadian There's one. I don't know. I, I know did. Sprint had that capability. It was I no longer. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was IDEN for Sprint, wasn't it? Small I D E N. I, I don't didn't. know. It's okay. been so long. I just remember the phone and I thought, oh, that's pretty cool. I mean, actually, it's, I thought, well, a pretty good feature, honestly. It, 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 well, it, it's honestly, it was. But the interesting <clears> thing about <throat> it was, is that uh, uh, the original thing with it is, is it was basically a radio. It, mm -hmm. it was not much different than, than the radio cops use. I mean, <laughs> yeah. You know? uh, and at the time, because technology was so, you know, in its infancy in the in in that age it, it was a huge thing for businesses to be able to use that so a lot of trucking companies used them mm -hmm. logistics companies 
uh, landscapers. If they had a big company, landscaping company, they would use them. Right. Uh, and it was big in Canada and the States. Other so two different brand names using the same network, basically. There was a second right. network that worked differently. And I don't remember which one was which in the States that didn't work in Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it was I, a nice way for I, businesses, like if you're a construction okay. company, to not – because that was back in the day when you didn't have unlimited you know, talking and texting. You had to pay for every minute – and which was, you know, looking back, it's like, man, that was ridiculous. Thirty nine, and so it, it saved the company a lot of money because they just used the the radio walkie talkie feature, and they didn't have to use the cell phone minutes. So it was, I thought it was genius. Honestly. Yeah, thirty nine ninety nine got me five hundred minutes <laughs> yeah. of local talk time. Fifty seven. Uh, no, sorry, a dollar fifty a minute for long distance. <laughs> yeah, I remember the first uh, few cell phones I had. Ask, there's a couple, a couple of days I, got, I was like, "Oh my gosh, I talked way too much last month." It's like a five hundred dollars cell phone bill, dude. My first cell phone was a brick phone, and yeah. the plan was like twenty nine ninety five or something like that. It included nothing. It was it was uh, fifty cents a minute. Period. Yeah. Thirty five yeah, cents. Yeah, a minute. it's like hello. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, hang on, 35 cents a minute in the evening and only 10 cents a minute from uh, yeah. 9, p- 9 p.m. to 9 or to 7 a.m. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spent most of my time talking on it during the day and never paid the bill. Yeah. And you're, you're watching your watch. Okay, all right, all right, listen up quick. No, I got to go. watch my watch. That's the problem. I never paid the bill. <laughs> I didn't have the money for that. I, yeah. But I don't know why I kept using it like that. It was in, I, was, I was young. Uh, I mean, this was 1993 or something like that. I mean, brick phones were old at the time. But I, that's what my first phone was. Um. You know, a couple. Of, you I remember know, my first StarTac. <laughs> that, that was the coolest phone. The StarTac, the Motorola StarTac. The StarTac Star came a couple of years after that. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I thought that was the coolest Star-Tac. phone. Everybody had one. Everybody had. You got to have a StarTac. I, I did end up getting a StarTac, but years later, they were like an old commodity at that point. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I finally got one. I only used it for like three months, and I moved on to something else because that there was no practicality in it anymore. Uh, but that's what the thing is. Phones kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And I actually said to people, and I was selling phones at Rogers in Canada. Uh, and I was telling people the phones are getting smaller, 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 but when they get down to the point where the, they're like this, they're going to start getting bigger and you're going to end up seeing a bunch of phones that look like a, uh, you know, like you hold, you're going to hold them like that. And I said, why? I said, because you'll be able to actually see more on the screen and you'll be able to hold it to your face. I wasn't even thinking about the possibility of how a smartphone was going to look. I thought they were going to look like that Nokia thing, um, the one that flipped open and had a yeah, keyboard. Yeah, yeah. I thought that yeah, was yeah. where we were going, right? Until all of a sudden, Apple comes up and says, hey, there's the iPhone, and we're like... Oh, my gosh. My yeah, first phone like that. Was- you remember the Kyocera's? The Kyocera had one like that that flipped open, had a keypad. Yeah, yeah. It was my first cell phone that I could use data on like connecting to a computer that they just allowed that functionality without having special, you know, hack yeah. cables and everything. And I thought that was the coolest thing. What was <laughs> that? Like, my yeah. Kyocera. 9110 or something like that. I think it was. Called. I don't remember. It was, yeah, it was yeah. funny. And you, you actually, oh, like the whole phone flipped up. Oops, you can't see it. It went up like yeah. that. And then the keyboard, you just hold it up and use the keyboard like that. And it's well, absolutely mine was long way. Basically, so it was different. It was, it was more than an organizer. It did more than an organizer would because it, yeah. obviously you could use the phone and you could send and receive email on it. And this is technically before what we think of as smartphones. It was a PDA that had a phone in it rather than a phone that had a PDA. Uh, yeah. Or sorry, a phone that had a PDA rather than a PDA that had a phone. So, and yeah. this is way yeah, before yeah. BlackBerry, right? Speaking of which, by the way, I know we're going way off topic, but we only got a few minutes left anyways. Um, I had one of the first Blackberries. I want to say the first, but I think I actually had the second version of it based on something I saw on the internet uh, a few days back. But uh, it actually said RIM on it. Um, didn't say BlackBerry. Oh, that, yeah, it that's old school. RIM BlackBerry, and it was just a two-way pager. That was it. You, you yeah. basically there's just, a lot of people probably don't even know what rim is that, that, that that's not even research in motion it was a canadian no, i know but I, that's a lot of people don't even know they just know it's blackberry 
Well, yeah, I know. That's why I'm saying it. A Canadian company based out of Waterloo was incredibly successful until they just couldn't keep up with uh, Android. It wasn't. It wasn't um, Apple that killed them. It, it was Android um, because they tried to compete with Android. They should have tried to compete with Apple. To be quite frank with you, uh, they were trying to do things to to stay in line with what Android was capable of doing. But they had yeah. technically a closed ecosystem. They should have competed with Apple, and they would have survived. Uh, and yeah. they were huge. I mean, if you remember, President Obama was sworn in and said, can we make some kind of concession? I don't want to give up my BlackBerry. At the time, you weren't allowed to. You had to give up a phone because data was a thing. They weren't just like old-fashioned phones, right? Yeah. Um, they had to make sure it was secure. But once it was proven by BlackBerry and and Obama's staff that that it was the most secure phone on the planet by a yeah, launch. It was, it was, it was. By, at the time, by a the butt, and I hated them, but yeah, they were. <laughs> by, sorry, by today's standards, it's not that secure. You're uh, right, yeah. But, I mean, everything but, has but, encryption now, and it's all, yeah, there's. Yeah, yeah, back then, back then, if you weren't the, the user of the, of the phone, you weren't getting in without the user's permission. Uh, right. and, and if you were talking BlackBerry to BlackBerry, they had end-to-end -end encryption. Who the hell knew that was a thing back then? Keep in mind, Obama left. When did he leave office? That was a while ago. <laughs> yeah. This was his first term uh, in, before he was actually sworn in, actually. Uh, he had been elected, but he hasn't yet sworn in. Uh, so he was still just a president-elect. And he said, I need to keep my BlackBerry. And they made the arrangements. Yeah. And he held he that BlackBerry, at least for the first term. I think he might have had it for, the, uh, for well, maybe not the same one. But I, I think he's still got it. It's probably in his, uh, in his. Oh yeah, he probably still owns it. It's in his. Um, all those when the president, you know, they get out of office and they take all yeah. their stuff and they build themselves a museum and you know. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta look at the time. Okay, yeah, we we're gonna have to start thinking about yeah. saying goodbye to everything today. Well, I think we and, covered it as he wanted really covered, so we're we're good. Yeah, we kind of a little bit flew a little bit more all over the place on this one, but. Uh, we just want to sort of get in whatever was most relevant for right now for the last several days and what will still be relevant for the next few days at least. And next week, I don't know exactly what we're going to talk about, but uh, I'm sure there's a little bit more news coming out. Oh, yeah. Always. Areas. Always. 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 Always new and, news. And, what's that? Always new news. Always new news. Who knew about the new news? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm Lionel McClintock. I'm in Canada. I'm Robert from the U.S. And we'll see you next episode. All right. Take it easy. <laughs>